Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. We have a very special series for you today from the weekly North American Cup. But this is not just a regular cast. This is a series that I've been told has some of the most special builds I've ever seen. And I'm not surprised because this is Alpha Rex Australia, and he's one of the most creative Protoss players in the world. His opponent in the top left, good game game, is Ratata. Ratatata is, of course, uh, Vanya was his former name. Uh, Russian Zerg player, very good player, and uh, he is a, a very good Zerg, very aggressive, uh, makes more Roaches, Ravages, Zergings than pretty much any other Zerg in the world. I don't know how he does it. Not really known as a big standard economy Zerg, more of a mid-game Swarmer, uh, but that is, in my opinion, one of the scariest things to face as a Protoss player, and that is why it is absolutely bizarre that there is a gateway there. Why is there a gateway there? Why wouldn't you just build it on top of the ramp? What is the... I, I'm so confused. I don't know why this... Okay, so maybe he takes the third here and he can build like a shield battery here and kind of just hang out with his army here and already be defending in between the bases. And then he can build a backup wall off up there if he wants to later. I don't know what Australia is doing. This is clearly some special tactics. He's a very creative guy. He likes to experiment. You know, Australia really... I think gets a kick out of exploring with that creativity and figuring out his own unique way of playing. And it's important to play the game, you know, the way that you enjoy and, and find your own style and your own specialty. And that's why there have been periods where Australia has just been the absolute cutting edge of the meta. It's gonna go for a cyber core there. So it looks like, I don't know if that's a single space or a double space gap. I have no idea, not used to this wall off at all. Nexus does go down after cyber core though. Okay, so he's gonna be able to chrono adepts across the map very quickly because the gateway is so far forward. So that plus Cybercore before Nexus means the Adepts could find some good damage. Radata's gonna need to do a, a very nice job of just handling that. The probe's already being a bit annoying as well. And he's forced the third out here, which is very far from the main. Yeah, we've got to realize that is very far from the main base. So this might be all part of his plan. Force you to take a far away third, Chrono Adepts, immediately start Warp Gate as well. No delay on the Warp Gate tells us probably a ground style that'll be coming out. And he's up to double gas. He'll rally his next side down here to the expansion. As you can see, those rally points. Main rallies to one side of the mineral line, natural to the other side. So the probes are naturally spread apart. And Ratata, he has not built any Zerglings other than just two so far. He's going to go after the probe, push that back. But there's already an Adept coming across this map and should be shading forwards. A little slow on that shade there from Australia, but that's because he was putting a Robo down. Okay, so he's got a Robo and a second Adept chronoing forwards. Let's see what he can find with this. This Adept's going to shade into that base by the looks of it. If he shades from there, he can end right in the mineral line. Straya, what's he up to? He's got a probe going back in for a scout on the left side. I think he's worried about a big Ling all-in or something like that. Radata is known for being aggressive, and it might be part of his plan to bait an all-in from his opponent with this build order. Oh, the Adept comes in, shades, forces two Spore Tricks. Doesn't kill anything, though. Good defense there by Radata. Oh, Estrella though, joins up with the second Adept. He's just going to dive with only two Zerglings. Oh, forces the Evo Chamber block. Good handling by Radata though. Oh, dude, did he not lose a single drone? I mean, he's had to build a lot of buildings, lost a bunch of mining time. That's not free. And the Adepts did not dive, so that is very good damage. Now, Radata has a Pervert Pillar right above that natural though, which is an issue. And the Sentry is being built. Now, remember, this is New Balance. So the Sentry... Biggest change ever. Went from 26 seconds to 23 seconds. <laughs> Game changer. <laughs> Absolutely insane change. Um, all Once warp gate's done, it's the same. That hasn't changed. It's only pre-warp gate. So it's only for getting like early sentries out for early hallucination. The only other change is the sentry now has 3.5 rather than 3.15 move speed. So it's the same movement speed as the adept now, which I was like, maybe cool sentry adept pushes could work better because the sentries actually keep up with the adapts whereas they used to fall behind a little but like <laughs> it's such a theoretical situation I, I don't know how realistic that is now Australia's on two bases and he's starting to mass gateways it looks like he's done probing 38 probes. okay so he's doing a two gas immortal all in he's made a warp prism he's gonna is he gonna immortal drop Okay, no, no, no. The Prism's going to go out and join up with the Adepts that are on the map. He's got two Adepts out there. So he's going to go do some Adept harassment. Do the Ling see this? I, I'm not sure if the Ling caught a glimpse of that. No, he's steering around the Zerglings really nicely done. Meanwhile, Radata does not have a lair started. He's going up to third Gas Geyser. Five Queens, 11 Zerglings. Good drone count. I feel like Radata's doing a really good job, but unfortunately, Overlords aren't quite in the right position. He's got like four or five Overlords on this right side. He should have had at least a few over here. This is a big mistake. A lot of players... 
aren't used to the new maps. And as a result, we can see they're being a little bit more lax with their Overlord placement. I saw Solar do something like this the other day. Uh, only two drones could have been worse. But, oh, he shades in. And the Prism's there to pick him up. Grabs another two workers and then picks them up. And then goes for the third as well. There's no Queens there just yet. Dude, Australia is so slick with these sort of pressures. And look at that. Grabs one more. Five drones in total. Causes a bit of chaos. Not to mention the Mist injects on the natural going down right now. And, and that is really good because behind it, a third of mortals about to pop. Lots more gateways, lots more pylons coming down. It's going to be seven gateways warping in units behind this. Already up to how many centuries is that? Five centuries, which is going to be a lot of force fields. Tries to go back in with the drop, not able to find anything. The queens, the roaches, and the lings holding firm. Vanya, aka Radata, is not actually building any drones. And that's because this overlord sees what's coming. He knows what's happening in this game. He's doing nothing but building roaches, ravages, and zerglings. And I don't know if Sentry Immortal is going to work against the player who knows it's coming. Pylon to completely wall off at home. Very clever move by Astraea. And, uh, what? Radata's building a spore crawler and two evos. He wants to block the push. He's going to try and block it with evo chambers. I mean, they only cost 75 minerals and they have a huge amount of hit points. So that can, if your opponent A moves, they'll spend a lot of time attacking the evo chambers and, and it makes it awkward for the Protoss units. This is a really clever move. I have not seen this before. Evo chambers just thrown out front against an army that has immortals in it because technically they should shave through pretty quickly. Adepts on the right side shade in, only get two drones. Meanwhile, a big amount of zealots warping in. You cannot do much against zerglings if they've got mass zealots there. Oh, the queen, she's going to take some transfusers, but she goes down despite it. Force fields. Oh, watch out. Does dodge those. If he can trap another Ravager. Oh, that's good. Any Ravager that goes down is real nice for Australia here. This is a seven sentries in the army, so it's a pretty good little push. Uh, does he just warp in Stalkers now? No, he's still going sentries and zealots. He's going sentries and zealots. Mass sentries warping in. He's reinforcing sentries into the fight. He just wants to have unlimited force fields. But the thing is, they will run out. The corrosive bile is breaking through. Yes, the queens are going down. One of the Evos has gone down, but they, they are tanking damage. Oh, the Lings come in. Get a bit of a surround. Nice bile. Does land on a zealot. One sentry does fall. Nine sentries are still up. The zealots in the top got separated from the pack. You got to be careful about that, Estrella. Biles are going to land. And more zealots going down, as do some zerglings. The sentries do a bit of a spready. Guardian shield is down. There's still nine sentries there. What's it? Is he just doing mass zealot sentry? It feels like he is. With three immortals there, it makes sense. The immortals are such good range damage output. They're so tanky, so they never really die. Uh oh, a sentry gets biled down. Great moves by Radata. Takes out three or four sentries. One of the immortals almost dies, but a hot pickup saves it. These two sentries still very low, though. Another sentry goes down. And it feels like, oh, this is basically being held. All the sentries are gone. And you can see how warping sentries into the fight usually isn't really the best call. He, I, I, I didn't even realize he built five pylons on the front. What the hell? I guess he figured he'd need supply to warp in and wanted to create a wall at the same time. Estrella is truly doing some special tactics in this game. But Radatha seems to have held. He's going roach speed now. More ravages, more lings. And what is Estrella? Oh, no! Oh, Radatha, remember we talked about he didn't have overlords in the main. He hasn't fixed that issue, guys. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He doesn't realize. He pokes forward and he thinks he's retreated home. He's got to realize he's inside your main. He the call is coming from inside the house. Radatha! Radata! Oh no! There's six sentries. Australia warped in a fresh round of sentries. He's making even more. He's going back up to eight sentries. He, every sentry you kill, normally you don't see sentries rebuilt once the fighting starts, but he does not care. Australia's like, nah, I'm just going to keep force fielding you out of your base. And attacking up that choke normally sucks, but attacking into force fields up that choke is absolutely appallingly bad. The immortals want to go forward and fight. The sentries do want to pull back. One of the sentries does fall. I'd like to see the zealots go after the main base if they can. Rochoran looks like it's going to fall. That's a huge problem. Oh, man. Oh, man. He just can't get up this ramp. Because even if he gets a few units up, they'll be trapped. They'll be split from the rest of the army. The Rochoran goes down. Ravagers try to shove up the ramp, but that just means a couple of Roaches and Ravagers get stuck on top of the ramp. Blasted by the Immortal Sentry. And great old position micro here for Estrella. All the Zealots in the top left of our screen are getting minced by the Zealots. Another Ravager gets up the ramp only to get blasted. The drones trying to escape, but the force field goes down on top of that ramp, and you can see there's nowhere for those drones to go. The observer sees absolutely everything. Two drones left on top of the ramp. They all go down. Oh no! Force field's trap. Four, uh, three roaches, one, uh, three ravages, one roach there. They all go down. The sentries may be taking quite a bit of damage. You've got to be careful. Those sentries only have five range. The ravages have six, and they are very fragile. But dude, the immortals are just slaying. 31 kills, 28 kills, and 26 kills. This is a disgusting build from Estrella, who is still doing nothing but warping in zealots and sentries with all of his minerals and gas. 
I mean, this is a, a deadly, deadly push, a nasty push. He's taken two more gases behind it. He's building more pylons as he hits the supply block here. But Raditz has been evicted from his main. It's down to just 23 workers. And oh, that is such a nasty rotation. A big mistake from Radita. To be fair, Radita had held this off. And I feel bad for him because Radita had shut this push down really well. The Evos, the Ravages, the Lings, perfect handling, great scouting. But the rotation in the main brings me back to Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm before the Ravager, where every Zerg lost games to this all the time. The old switch into the main and force field you out of your base. I honestly, there's so many tears that I have cried over tournament games where I thought I was winning and then someone suddenly got the force field on my ramp and I was like, no! <laughs> and I know that's exactly how Radita feels in this situation where he's just going to be like, oh, you're kidding me, man. That's the tap out. GG, Australia with the cheeky one. At the end of that game, he had one sentry left alive and he'd lost 21. He built 22 sentries in that game. Ah, uh, rough loss. Let's see if he can bring it together though. In game number two, we got good game gamers, Radita, bottom right of Babylon, Australia in the top left on Alpha X now. That was such a cute build from Australia. And um, I kind of I kind of like the mix of Radita shutting it down, but then Australia finding a way anyway. Uh, I, I, I got to say, is the sentry the new meta? Is it, is it going to be mass sentry now? They build three seconds faster. They move ever so slightly faster. The funny thing is, I think the move speed might be something I'm overlooking. I'm making fun of it. I'm like, 0.35 more movement speed. But there are often times where you just can't quite move them forward quick enough to get the force fields in the right position. The sentry is a bit slow to get up to the choke point and land the force field. It might actually make those sentry pushes just that much more deadly. Like, it really could do that. So I wonder if we're going to see more of that mass sentry play. If anyone's going to innovate it, Australia is always the king of ground Protoss when everyone else is opening Stargate. And he's also the king of doing weird 17 Nexus openings, like this one right here. So he's gone Nexus first on 17 supply, just after the hatchery goes down for Radata. Now, if you don't see a probe scout coming in as Radata, you're probably thinking Australia's going gas first. He's going to have his tech up a little bit quicker. He's going to hit a really crisp, you know, adept pressure maybe into a very fast Oracle. Little do you realize that in fact, no, no, no. He's going to have later tech than normal. He's just got a super fast economy. Nexus first, I feel like, used by Neeb and Estrella a fair bit. I don't really see anyone else regularly mix it into their play, like... Oh! Oh, he just... I didn't realize when you kill the Arubus on the map, the f a big pile of feathers pops into the air. What is Estrella? He's gone gate, gas. He hasn't built a Cybercore yet. Why? He's not going Nexus... Be no! That's an illegal move. You can't go third Nexus before Cybercore. What?! You've already gone Nexus first, one of the greediest builds in the book. You can't get a third Nexus before Cybercore. Oh my god. The Overlord's gonna see it, and he's gonna be like, Hey, that, 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 that's meant to be finished about now. And he's gonna be like, oh, I guess it's Nexus first. But even then, that's still too late for Nexus first. That's like 30 seconds, 40 seconds delayed, when it should be maybe 15 seconds delayed for the Nexus first. That is, that is a big, big difference, man. I don't know if he's going to realize, though. Does Radata go down and realize that third base is just outside of vision? I'm not sure. Zealot's going to come out. Probe is over here for Estrella, and he's going to see, of course, Radata moving out towards the third base. Behind this, he's only on one gas. As you can imagine, three Nexus. That's, that's so much money, so much minerals he needs. He's going to go Warp Gate. There's no way to get into Stargate tech when you do this, and that's the big limitation, which is why I would advise Estrella to get an early Sentry. I think that's one of the best things you can do here, because if you're playing this sort of build, you don't have... Uh, I mean, you can kind of scout with this Adept, but it's so late, Link Speed's going to be done soon. Oh, he killed another Urubu on the map. Oh, man, he's really trying to bring bad luck down on himself. Uh, but yeah, basically, the uh, point I was trying to get to is a hallucination will manage to do it. Now, oh, Radata sees the Nexus. Radata sees the Nexus, guys. He's going to go for eight Zerglings to try and surround this Adept. Queen's already pushing it back. Third Queen is coming out. And he has... Oh, he's back on gas. He's already put back on gas. Okay, Radata is planning something very aggressive. A Roach Warren goes down as well. Estrella. Oh, he doesn't quite see that, guys. He stopped the shade just before he saw it. Could try that one more time. He already saw quite a few lings. That's a lot of lings going across to try and mess up his third. If he invests a lot of pylons and stuff there, that could be a big issue. Adept goes into the back of the natural. He's going to try and get a drone or two before he goes down, but Radita too slick with the micro. Saves the drone and is going to counter him with the mass link. Oh, Radita's all over this. I think Estrella's just been way too greedy in this game. He's got to run the probes away. He's going to lose that pylon and the Nexus, which is a big mineral investment. He's trying to come out to defend, but he could get surrounded out there. Okay, yeah, yeah. He makes the better call and just falls back, right? 
Right. You can't defend that, man. That's way too many Zerglings. Definitely cannot. He's got to get back behind his wall. Even where he is right now, he could get surrounded out there. He's thinking about trying to get some damage, but that's way too dangerous. He's got to pull back into the choke point. Oh, no. You see, this is what I'm talking about. He loses the Stalker for free. Big mistake for Australia there. He's got a Robo on the way. Three gateways. He loses this third. On the other hand, Radata did that off like 26 workers. And even committed to two Roaches, which he's realized he doesn't need. Now he's going Lair, Drones. I think the Lair's so quick and the Spore Crawler because he thinks there might be a DT follow-up. Because Australia's kind of tricked him to staying low tech. But also you've got to realize that Australia's mining so much more than him, even just on two base. He's like, dude, I've got 500 more resources a minute. I mean, as Radata gets another 510 drones out, he's going to equalize and then overtake in the economy. But by that point, Australia might be able to put on some pressure. And he's got three adepts on the bottom, two adepts on the top. He doesn't have a Twilight Council, though. He's going Robo Bay and three more gateways. So he's going six gate Robo Bay. Is he going to do like a two base Colossus push? There's no sentries or anything this time around. These adepts are going to be his first real vision. He shades into the third base. There's some lings and roaches on top of it, but adepts on the right side. And I think Ranata's handling it about as well as you could hope. Yeah, it doesn't feel like those adepts could really do much. And they're going to just go and hide a little bit down there. Yeah, this is always a good thing. So if things come and surround them, they'll trade out decently when they're in these gaps between the mineral lines because there's not a lot of surface area. And going to go for a warp prism right now as well as a third base. Australia, this this is not a build at this point. I don't think he really had a follow-up plan for if he loses the third. I think he's just making it up as he goes. And he's like, I'll just rebuild my third now and then probe back up, I guess. He's not probing though. Whereas there are roaches on the way for Radata, who's finally taking that income lead now that he's up seven workers. The Adepts are coming back in. The Lings should be able to get the surround on those bad boys. Straya. Oh, good, good, good little shifty shifts. Oh, yep. Slips them a few different times and takes out like five Zerglings. And what is... Is this Mass Adept? But, but he never built a Twilight. He doesn't have Glaives. He's doing a Mass non-Glaive Adept attack. This is... What? 14 Adepts and a Zealot. Now, obviously, Roaches smash those units. The Zealot goes down, but... The mobility is kind of annoying. Oh, he sees the Ravager Ling. He knows that Radata's being very aggressive. It's a big 52 drone timing. Double Stargate transitions trying to come in behind this. He's also got a sneaky disruptor coming from behind. Oh, it comes out from behind the grass. That's Radata's vision. And he gets a lot of roaches with the first shot. Oh, by distracting him with the depths coming in from all sides. That's really hard to deal with. He's also got a prism on the south he can use to keep harassing. Now the disruptor. Uh oh. Uh oh, one of the disruptors. Oh, it got six roaches, but it does recall. Barely saves itself. Another disruptor's on the way. Third base, he's warping in more adepts. These adepts here are going to try and shade past. Potentially, he's also got the warp prism off to the side. I like the way Australia is refusing to fight front on, but these ravages and lings could cause him a big trouble. The bile's not going to land on them. It's going to shade away for the moment. Gather those units together with the disruptors and come on out with those big boy balls. The pylon will go down. Vanya, though, aka Radata, he's trying to go into muters. Oh, no, that's bad because there's a Phoenix transition. Australia will start up Phoenix any second now. That's just part of the build. You're so busy dealing with all these ground units that you're not thinking about Phoenix. And you're definitely not thinking about going Hydras to counter Disruptors. So, oh, this is, oh, this is so bad for Radata. Australia just does like random unupgraded Adept pressure, comes in with a Sneaky Disruptor through the hedge, and then goes into a swap into two Stargate Phoenix, after which I bet he'll swap back into ground play, maybe like Charge Archon, something like that, maybe Immortals. And that's going to make it so Radata's always one step behind on the tech. This is actually this weird situation you can get when you're putting on weird pressure the Zerg isn't used to seeing, it doesn't know how to read, where the Zerg doesn't realize that they're building units that are already counted. Normally it's the other way around where the Protoss like scouts the Spire and the Muters and then starts building Stargates and starts building the Phoenix. But you got to realize Protoss have the hardest counters to pretty much every Zerg unit in the arsenal. The problem is that they take a very long time to build. They're very expensive and they suck in small numbers. But if you get up to like six or eight Phoenix here, they can kill 20 Muters easily, especially with Australia's level of micro. Oh man, he even sees the Muters with these Adepts. Oh, man. I mean, the prism's going to go down. It is what it is. I don't think he minds. He, he now sees the muters, which is going to make sure he hides the phoenix. He's going to let the muters fly across the map and absolutely wipe them. Roach Ravager Ling might attack the north, but I think the Disruptor Adept should be able to defend there. And the phoenix is just going to jump all over this army. He's still warping in mass Adept, guys, to deal with the heavy Zergling part of the army and to just tank up front. Muters are coming in, and the Phoenix fly in, and oh, Radata's got to feel so bad. He did such a good job in that first game. 
But this one, he's been really tricked by Australia. It's been such a weird build, an unfamiliar situation to read. And he did a good job of what I thought was getting out of the woods. And if he didn't commit to the muters, I think he would have been fine here. But that is so many muters to lose for nothing. He's going to attack on the north, but mass adepts plus batteries. Ravagerling knows it can't make a dent in that. Units lost tab tells us a story, and that is of Protoss dominance. Ten muters for no Phoenix, and now you've got eight, nine Phoenix once this one pops. They can just keep picking up Ravages, Overlords, Drones all day. That's forcing Radatar to go Corruptors, but Corruptors will not help in the ground fight, so you need enough Corruptors to beat the Phoenix and enough ground to beat the ground army. And those Disruptors are scary! First one only gets one Ravager. Great spready. Second one gets like three or four Roaches. Next one only gets one Ravager. But the Lings are just so bad against this number of Adepts. Even without Resonating Glaives, the Lings just can't do anything against the Phalanx of Adepts. All the Adepts are standing shoulder to shoulder. Their shields covering each other and blocking so darned well. The Queens and the Roaches trying to hang on right now. More Roaches and Lings trying to be built. The Adepts are going to shade on in further. The Phoenix are ganking these Corruptors in the low numbers as they pop. Australia cancelling the shade. A lot of the Roaches thought he was going to shade into the main, so they were in the wrong position right now. Somehow, Radatar still has an equal economy in terms of work account and a fourth base. If he can just shut these Adepts down, he might be okay. But of course, Australia isn't going to throw those units away. He's going to go for a recall, save the Adepts on the top. These Adepts here also got a few more drones, and they're going to shade in for even more where that came from. Australia looking, if he can get three, four, five more workers behind it, he's got air weapons, he's got more Phoenix on the way, he's actually doubling down on Mass Phoenix, he says, I already killed so many Corruptors in a good trade, I think I can continue it, and look at this, he's picking up Roaches, he's killed six Corruptors, 16 Muters, but only two Phoenix, that's such a good trade, he doesn't even need Phoenix range or anything like that, he's like, no, that's fine, like, we can just do it, unfortunately, his wall is unmanned, uh-oh, Australia chucking a little bit of a hero there, it's always messy using this sort of complicated composition, but look at that, uh-oh, He's going to warp in some Adepts in the main and the natural. The shield battery does save those probes. Only loses four workers. Radata, very good on the micro, running these lings around, looking for mistakes. But Australia's not making big enough mistakes for him to capitalize on. He's cleaning up the Overlords in the middle. The Adepts are cleaning up the Zerglings in the main and the natural. And a Fleet Beacon and a Twilight Council to go down at the same time. So Phoenix Range... Resonating Glaives is almost certain to go down since he's already got 18 Adepts on the map. But who knows, maybe he just goes straight to Charge or Blink and six Stalkers warp in. So Blink indeed, it'll be uh, three Disruptors are on the field. You've already got the Disruptors. You add Blink Stalkers to that. That's a hugely powerful army for the mid game. And remember, there's no Evo Chamber upgrades, whereas all the upgrades are starting to come in and Australia's Phoenix is still a looming threat. 12 Corruptors may be able to beat 15 Phoenix in a fight. Not with the Stalkers helping out. That's always going to be a bit of a rough one. The Disruptors are there, looking to just throw those balls at him. Oh, that was a bigger shot than I thought he'd get. Well done. Got a Ravager and a few Roaches there. Australia navigating through the weirdness uh, like he's very, very comfortable with it. The man is just known for creating these situations and being very, very good at understanding and having planned out. I feel like Hero finds himself in these situations almost accidentally and wins with microaggression and madness. Australia, on the other hand, I feel like has already thought the situation through and is or is not surprised to be there. You know, he's like, oh, no, no, I, I had a dream about this situation. And I'm pretty sure if I do A, B, C, yep, oh, yeah, I'm winning. And you're like, what? Who prepares for this situation, you madman? Big corrosive files do land. A few more Phoenix go down. 12 Corruptors versus 12 Phoenix looking a little bit more favored for Radata, but the battle on the ground is the problem. Six Disruptors, 12 Stalkers, 22 Adepts. And what's he got to deal with it? A couple of Ravages and Zerglings. He's going to go up to 15 Ravages. That's, uh, when you get above 16 Ravages or 20 Ravages thereabouts, that's when I call it a North America of Ravages or a Rainer of Ravages. Rainer is, is known for doing it when he's desperately behind and hoping he just wins with sick Ravager Biles. Um, but a lot of players in North America will just do this as their standard game plan. The problem is, it is what Zergs do when they're in a desperate spot, because there's no way you can rely on Carissa Biles landing on a top-level Protoss player like Australia. Oh, he's going to go for a big engage. Oh, good spreadies from Raditz are so far, but Australia is only using his balls sparingly. He's throwing them out a few at a time, and you can see these Adepts that never died from earlier on. Every time there's an engage like that, they kill so many Zerglings. The Lings that are normally good versus Stalkers and Disruptors just don't trade well when there's this many Adepts in the mix. Corruptors looking for the Phoenix, but they, they miss them. Oh, he missed them. Estrella is going for a sneaky Phoenix run by on the right side of the map. Stalker Disruptor Adept on the left side. This is a sick style. And I think he just realized he's got his opponent pinned, even though his fourth is late. Look at that. Disruptors. Oh, no. Oh, obviously the Phoenix running down the right side distracted him. Uh, Radatar does unzip his fly and starts doing Wee Wee on the Nexus of Estrella. 
But uh, even doing a few wee wees, I mean, it might hurt Australia's feelings a little bit. I don't think it's going to matter, even if you kill these bases. How do you deal with the army? This is a bigger army for Australia. Oh, no! Oh, that one actually went right through. That was kind of hilarious. There's a lot going on. Phoenix picking up Queens at the same time. Another Disruptor lands. Looks like the Corruptors did take two Nexus down before pulling back. Australia's going to try and rebuild them. But his Phoenix are just ravaging the economy of Radata. The army's still on the front line. Radata is back to just two bases. And those two bases aren't even mining that much. Ling's counteract and do cancel Australia's rebuild on the fourth. The Phoenix, though, picking off the ramp with the Corruptors as they rally in in small numbers. I don't think we ever got Phoenix range off the Fleet Beacon. There's been just too much action for him to focus on that. But Radata knows when he's beat. And Australia there with a nasty lift into the main off of his mass sentry build that looked like it was failing. The mass sentry immortal in game one, just continually warping in sentries to reinforce that. But in game two, going for the greediest build of all time, having the third shut down and then just finding a way to say, hey, doesn't matter. Rebuild the third, unupgraded the depths, into sneaky disruptors, into two star phoenix, into more disruptors, into stalkers. He's one of the few people who'd feel comfortable there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the game. If you enjoy other weird strategies, check out one of these other ones on the screen, and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye and good night.